Different. All right. So, first of all, our Board of Education has unanimously approved a thorough and a thoughtful local budget request to Franklin County. Our board unanimously approved it. It included budget details with a lot of depth. We've covered expenses for five years, historical impacts on, of longevity bonuses. We've covered short-term facility needs, charter school enrollment numbers, ADM statistics, ESSER funding impacts, and more. We have gone above and beyond, and I did mention that in the email that I sent Ms. Denton, that we've gone above and beyond what most of our neighbors have shared in terms of their uh, budget request. Um, Ms. Coley is here. She has her little cart that she wheeled in over beside of her seat, and she could, if, if she needs to take time to go through all of the documents that we provided, uh, either in paper or electronically to you all, she's happy to do that. Um, with that, and I showed you my notebooks as well, I believe that you have more than enough information to make an informed decision. And that's not saying that we're not willing to give additional information. Um, we provided you with ample information, and the frustration comes when we're being asked for specific invoices and contracts when we provided significant amounts of information. We have, just like you all have processes, you have policies in place um, and procedures, we have processes in place. We have board policies that govern everything that we do. We have auditors that review our books. We have checks and balances in place to ensure that we are operating within our adopted board policies. We can give more, but my concern is that, and we're more than willing to answer questions, which is what Ms. Denton read in that response was, before we send anything additionally, we need to sit down and have a conversation, which is what we've been asking for, is that face-to-face -face conversation, which I hope we can have. I don't know how conducive this will be tonight, but I hope that we can have some of that conversation. Um, my concern is that we have, you see these, this is time that our staff is spending answering questions when we are in the culminating part of the school year where 8,000 students are engaged in teaching and learning, and that's our responsibility as well. So with that in mind, um, and along the same lines, for the past two years, we have provided extensive information to the county. We have gone back, we've met multiple times, we've gone back and answered questions um, on numerous occasions, provided reports. We have had no indication that that data that we used has been part of the decision making in our funding request. Prior year um, funded at a um, much lower level than what was needed um, and we ended up having to dip into fund balance significantly to offset that deficit. And last year after all of the meetings, all of the work, we come to the county manager's budget presentation only to learn that of the $3.4 million that we had laid out very thoughtfully and thoroughly as our need, that we were being, it was being recommended that we receive 700000 towards that with, an, with no, explana no clear explanation as to where that number came from. So that's one of the concerns about spending time pulling together documentation when we are, on, are not seeing that that is used at the decision-making process. Um, the next point, our local funding request reflects what is needed to maintain operations next year. No more, no less. We are not padding our budget or, or creating a situation where we're inflating our request so that we can um, settle like as a negotiation. That's not, I don't think that's honest. I don't think that's the way that we should proceed with taxpayers' dollars. So we've been very clear about what our request is and the need for that. And the bottom line is that the overwhelming majority of our local requests for Franklin County Schools is the $2.5 million for the longevity bonus. There are a couple of other items there. We do have inflationary uh, increases, for instance. Utilities costs are supposed to go up over $400,000 next year alone. Um, we have worked to, to tighten our belts in spite of inflationary impacts, and we have reduced our spending um, by 431000 to offset our request. Franklin County Schools is requesting $3.36 million, but as Ms. Denton pointed out, 
28 percent of our local funds go to, to uh, charter schools. So that means if Franklin County Schools receives that $3.36 million, then the charter school funding increase request will be um, need to be $1.8 million for a total of $5.2 million. So we're not asking for $5.2 million for Franklin County Schools. We're asking for that for a combination of Franklin County Schools and charter students. The next point, in spite of continued inflationary increases, we've been committed to being good stewards of taxpayers' dollars. We have offset our request by reducing the expenses I mentioned. We've also absorbed three office positions at the central office in the past year to find savings. We've also prioritized maintaining positions funded by that COVID relief ESSER funds by, that have a direct impact on student achievement like, uh, including our elementary interventionists and middle school coaches without requesting additional funding and we've shifted our media coordinator positions with those funds uh, into state funds to, into classroom teacher positions to, uh, to allow us to maintain the interventionists and instructional coaches without asking for an increase to maintain that important, those important initiatives which saves 1.5 million more off of a local request. The next point, longevity bonus is not news. We have been communicating to the county on that uh, early and often. For the past three years, that has been something that has been communicated to the county on multiple occasions, including state of the districts and budget messaging um, and our budget presentations. We have not asked the county for additional funds to support an increased teacher supplement since 2017-18. We've instead said we're going to use our ESSER funds to help offset uh, those impacts on the local budget to incentivize our staff to maintain employment with Franklin County Schools. With that, over a thousand of our employees are eligible to receive that longevity bonus for the 24-25 school year. And just as a side note, at least 637 of those are in our county residents and taxpayers in Franklin County um, that receive that financial incentive. We must have these funds in place to remain competitive in all areas of employment. That is bus drivers, cafeteria, uh, maintenance, instructional assistants, teachers. All of our positions benefit from that longevity bonus. And we surveyed our employees. Over 70% of them stated that the longevity bonus impacts their decision to remain with Franklin County Schools. And I said I would be direct, and I am. If these bonuses are not funded by the county, our employees are just, they're going to perceive that as a loss of pay. They've received that for three years now, resulting from county leadership electing not to pay that longevity bonus. Charter schools, I mean, we talked about that already. They, in Franklin County, they receive 28% of local funding, and that's based on state law. The county's continuing to grow, and we're seeing enrollment increases in traditional and uh, traditional public and charter schools. Um, one thing, you know, in looking at the county's page on uh, uh, the education funding, it's lengthy, it's thorough, but it, it, it doesn't Franklin County Schools when in reality we have, um, we have 11,000 stu combined students between public schools and uh, charter schools in Franklin County. So the school age population that Franklin County is financially responsible for continues to grow. That's increased by 12 percent. Um, despite questions about our ADM numbers, and I think this is really impressive, and I think kudos to Ms. Coley and her, uh, her team for, for being able to do this, but considering all the variables, you know, last spring when we met with you all, you're like, well, how do you know about what the enrollment's going to be? How are you projecting that? We projected last spring, for budgeting purposes, a combined enrollment between us and charters of 10,780 students, and we actually enrolled 10,794. So with all of those variables, we were 14 students over our original projection and enrollment, which is over 99% accuracy. County must provide, the county uh, leadership must provide per pupil funding at the same level. We've talked about that before. Um, 
Our facilities are a priority and we must receive funds to address these needs short term while working on a long range funding plan. We have 2.6 million that we've identified in uh, short term needs and that addresses HVAC, roofing, lighting, carpeting, technology. Schools, we have a process in place for review of those and prioritization of those requests. Schools came forward with $11 million in identified needs and we've culled that down to $2.6 million. Our request for capital outlay is lower than the $3 million we requested last year for which we received half or $1.5 million. And um, we really would love to know more about debt service. Truly do want to as we can about debt service and how that works. The next bullet: the county is in a solid financial situation, and our school community knows it. We were fortunate enough to be here in February for the state of the district will be presented. So we had our principals and our central office leadership and a number of our school employees, and they were very encouraged to see the positive numbers for the county in terms of increases in revenues. You could read these. I'm not going to read all of this, um, but two points I'd like to make. I mean, uh, you know, overall numbers on the rise. Um, two numbers I'd like to mention. Uh, because I do can see a comparison here with us. The county appropriated this year, uh, this past year, in fiscal year 2023, $11 million to balance the budget. So um, that funding was appropriated in case it was needed over the course of the year to balance the budget. And we do that same thing in, in our schools. And the county didn't spend a penny of that. It was all put back in fund balance or into savings. And the years prior, for the several years prior, it wasn't quite 11 million, but it was the same thing. So that money is allocated, knowing that the county may have to spend it. And you were fortunate that you didn't have to spend any of that, and you were able to put it back into your savings account. Um, by comparison, last year we, this year we have appropriated 600,000 for that purpose, and our goal is to spend half of that, or around 300,000. Last year, since we only received 689000 to support the new charter school, we actually had to use $2.3 million of our fund balance to offset that funding not being there. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, around the county's financial situation is we received informal notice that there is a potential $845,000 plus decrease in low wealth funding for next year. Those funds are being decreased based on the state's formula, which is determined that the county, that Franklin County, has the ability to fund schools at a higher level due to increased local revenues. I will say I reached out to Representative Winslow and asked if there's any way we could get a waiver on that for the upcoming year that hit financially. And he case, but if we lose 845000 we didn't ask for anything extra in this request. We'll be dipping it, have to dip into fund balance to offset that, um, that request. Again, uh, a vote to not fully fund our request is a vote to cut salaries or people. We don't have extra things in our budget. So um, it, this, re this recommendation was unanimously approved by our Board of Education because they understand that if we don't get full funding of this request, we will either have to cut the longevity bonus that our over 1,000 employees um, have received for the past several years and are expecting, or we risk having to cut a significant, potentially significant number of positions and people. Either option shortchanges our students. Um, and then on the final expect Franklin County leadership to support the future success of our children. And here's your opportunity because we have not, um, we have not, you have not moved forward with a recommendation yet. And I, I've heard t discussion about tax rate and I, you know, I certainly don't, wouldn't expect you all to understand all the details of our budget. It's complicated and you're not in education and I don't understand every aspect of your budget. But I will say just looking at the numbers, if we're asking for a $5.2 million increase, you thought you might have to spend $11 million last year uh, in fund balance and you put every penny of it back that would actually fund that difference for two years. So um, you have an opportunity. 
uh, to demonstrate that you value, and I believe you value the children of Franklin County and the families of Franklin County. And I know based on the decisions that you're making, uh, you're working to move